Oh, hi, curly girl. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Bob. Hi, Shaz Marie. Hi. Hi, Hayley. <laughs> Lovely to see you all. Hello, Fiona. Hello, Facebook. Hello, YouTube. How is everybody? Just saying to our friends on Instagram, it's Wednesday. Yes. Hump day, as they say. Middle of the week, downhill, all the way, cruising to the weekend. So I thought what I'd do is just share a few really simple, healthy recipe ideas. I've got some treats for face, for gut, for skin, all of that. So keep your questions coming. We have got Amy in the house on Facebook. And Amy is there to basically ping questions my way because we are connected with the wonders of modern technology. Uh, so yeah, pop questions and comments there um, and also pick up things on Instagram. Apologies if I miss questions. It's sometimes hard to you know, focus on everything. I know that we women can multitask, but when you're looking at two different screens and iPads and trying to remember what on earth is going on, heavens, what day it is even, it can be a challenge. Anyway, thanks Winterberry, you like the blue. Do you know, I don't often wear blue. It's funny, I think this was my old school uniform, this sort of royal blue, so maybe it's something in my psyche that says, mm, I'm not sure I want to wear that. And I just think I'm such a sort of pinky, corally, ready person. Um, but I fished this out of the wardrobe and I just thought it was quite nice because it's, you know, got the shorter sleeve that I like and it's still quite kind of warm and cosy. I don't know what the weather's doing with you guys, but it's, it's a bit grey and drizzly here down in the West Country. So, um, yeah, thank you. I'm glad you think it suits me. Hello. Oh, you've got your magazine, Jane. Excellent. So this is landing through letterboxes around the nation and shortly around the globe because we do post globally. It just takes a little bit longer, obviously, to reach you guys. Um, this is the March-April edition. Yeah, and it's a fresh new focus. That's what I've written on the cover there and the kind of the mantra if you like I was talking about mantras with Holly and Phil on this morning on Monday the mantra for this one is redefine reconnect and rejuvenate yeah that's what we want to do we're all going to get let out soon and we will be able to reconnect with our loved ones we'll be able to redefine hopefully our lives and our well-being and rejuvenate that's what I was talking about actually on this morning on Monday. I mean, there's never enough time, is there? You know, I think they wanted me to cover four main areas of well-meaning, well-being, well-meaning, <laughs> well-meaning, well-being um, in six minutes and have a bit of kind of chit chat on air as well. So the four things that I talked about really were one in terms of the lockdown pounds. Don't worry so much about the fats. Worry about the sugars. And I illustrated it. I had a little bowl with seven sugar cubes in and saying that that is the amount of free sugars that the average adult in the UK is recommended by the NHS if you look at their website. And if you look at children, it's even less. It's like five. And I had a couple of examples of processed biscuits and cakes and things, which pretty much one of those takes up your whole daily allowance. So, you know, just be really careful. Just really look at the sugars because it's the sugars that are dietary baddies here. I just recorded actually yesterday a podcast with a brilliant obesity uh, expert. He's a bariatric surgeon. So he's the guy that does all the kind of stomach stapling and, and you know, stomach shrinking and really fascinating. And he had so much insight. Can't wait to share that with you. That's going on my main series of the Lizelle Wellbeing Show podcast. New one's just gone live today. Actually, really interesting. If you look at the Lizelle Wellbeing Instagram, um, I know that Amy put a little piece about that today just to say that that's gone live. And that's with a really lovely doctor. Oh my goodness, she was so interesting to talk to, Dr. Lucy Pollock. And she is a geriatologist, I think that's the right word. And basically she is looking after the geriatric side of medicine. And it's all about caring for very elderly people. And we touched on all sorts of interesting topics, including you know, how to broach those difficult conversations, maybe with older parents and looking for signs of dementia, Alzheimer's, how to have difficult end of life discussions and how to care for the very elderly. And really, really interesting. She has such empathy 
this doctor. She's she was just lovely, really, really lovely. Really, really enjoyed my um, time recording with her. So if you've got a moment, do head later to the podcast. So you can always find the links to podcasts, by the way, on lizardwellbeing.com or just on your podcast app. You know, whether you're using an Apple phone or an Android phone, Apple, I think, always use iTunes. Android have got Play, is it, and, and different systems. But basically, my podcast team load it up to a main central platform and then they push it out on all the different platforms so you can get it online, you can get it on your smartphone. And all smartphones these days have a little podcast app built in so you can find it easily. And if you subscribe, then it just means that in the mix of millions, literally, of podcasts, it just pings up. So it's always there with the fresh one. And I'm doing two every week now. So I've got my main Lizelle Wellbeing show, which goes out on a Wednesday. And that's the longer format. So that's maybe 45, 50 minutes or so. And then, of course, the Friday Five, which is just my shorter chit chat, which I do every Friday. And I've got a really good one planned for this Friday. Yeah, very topical. I think you will really enjoy it. It might enrage you a bit, but I think it will be a very good one. So, um, yes, that's all coming up on the airwaves. So what I thought I would do today is just um, really talk about ways to rejuvenate, you know, a la the magazine. If you want this, by the way, there is a special subscription offer. Studio 10, that lovely makeup brand, have given us £10 vouchers with every new subscription. You have to use direct debit and you can either keep the voucher for yourself, if you make a little note in the comment box, it'll come to you, or you can send it to whoever you would like to gift your subscription to, or maybe you'd like to have it for yourself if you're not already a subscriber. Anyway, there's a deal as well. I think it's six issues for the price of five, free UK PMP and your free voucher. So it's a really, really good time if you haven't yet got on the list to get your magazine um, or you'd like to give it to somebody else to enjoy for the whole year. Then, um, then please do while that deal is still going. So one of the things I've talked about before is the benefits of cold water treatment. Now you've got to be feeling a little bit brave for this, but some of you may also have heard of an amazing guy called Wim Hof, and he's otherwise known as the Iceman, and he's all about plunging into icy, icy waters. I mean, we're talking seriously icy. I mean, this is the guy who kind of takes a saw to the Arctic and cuts a hole and, you know, drops himself in for a freezing dip, not necessarily to be recommended for all sorts of reasons, including safety. But actually, one of the things that he does often do is sit in really cold baths or just say, look, you can turn your bathroom into a spa. You know, you can dial down the volume of the shower. And he's got a whole regime that you can sign up for, the Wim Hof method. But basically, it's about either getting into the shower and gradually turning the dial down, which is kind of the way I like to do it. I'm not really brave enough to just step straight into a cold shower. Or you could do just that, just go straight in. And you build up, so you might start with, you know, 10, 15 seconds, and then the next day, you know, 20 seconds, and then 30 seconds, and build up until you're actually under the really icy blast for about two minutes, and it is, really invigorating. I mean, there are so many studies about it helping to improve depression and low mood. It kickstarts the endorphins. I mean, it's like, whoa, you are suddenly, you know, you come out of there. It's a bit like if I go for a cold swim in the outdoors, do some wild swimming with Lily, which we used to do. I mean, alas, we haven't been able to do that now for over a year. But it is, it is freezing cold, that moment getting in. And it's so cold that it almost feels the water's burning your skin. But unbelievably bracing. I'm usually in there for about, I don't know how long, I don't think I've ever really timed it. It's probably only three or four minutes, something like that. I mean, there are some really hardy types who just swim up and down and they're, you know, there's lovely, I mean, older ladies with their little bobble hats on, just, you know, swimming, swimming, and they do it every day of the year, even like Wim Hof having to break the ice sometimes to get in because it's so cold. Lots of people talking about cold swimming. Yeah, I mean, just amazing. And it, you know, I think that all of us, hopefully, have got access to a bath or a shower and can have a cold dip or a cold shower, you know, worth trying. So think of me next time you're in the shower and you're setting the thermostat, whether you would actually brave it, let me know. I'd love to have a conversation about that because it is just such a simple, you know, free, cheap thing. And also it's a plus when your boiler breaks, isn't it, frankly? Look on the bright side. Hey, I have to have a cold shower. <laughs> Make the most of it. 
Why is it boilers always break when it's really cold? I mean, I, ours went wrong twice over the winter. Once I think was, was it Boxing Day? It was either Christmas Eve or Boxing Day. And it was one of those days when it was just impossible to get any help. Um, anyway, we're lucky here down in the West Country. We do have wood fires and all the rest of it. So we weren't too bad, but you know, it's just annoying. Anyway, um, the key thing is if you do have your cold shower is to wrap up warm afterwards. You know, get yourself into a nice toasty dressing gown or a nice warm towel or something um, and get warm again quickly. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about really is the importance of fats and oils. Those of you who follow me on Instagram will have seen this beauty this morning. Isn't she a joy? A joy to behold is my charity shop find. I think, yeah, she is. I don't know why she's a she, but I suppose because she's so beautiful. Um, is it a, a Limoges or a Longchamp? I think it's Limoges, but it's not a very... It's not one of those kind of really expensive Limoges. It's got the little sort of horse logo on, on the bottom. And it kind of sort of matches my china. Um, anyway, I love it. And as you can see, <laughs> there's not very much butter in there that's been left. Lots of comments actually about, do I leave my butter out all day? Well, at the moment I do because my kitchen is not that warm because it's not really very hot. Um, and actually we get through butter so quickly, you know, with all my kids here and I eat a lot of butter and I use it in cooking and things. So I will just take a small amount, maybe a, a quarter of a pack and put it in my butter dish and then keep it covered. And generally by the end of the day, it's gone. If it gets a lot warmer, then I will keep my butter in the fridge or in a cold cupboard. You know, if you've got a pantry or a larder that's cold, then, you know, you, you can do that. But obviously then it's tricky because if you want to spread it, it takes a little bit longer to spread. You know, always make sure that the toast is nice and warm and then it melts straight away. There's lots of chit chat going on about hot cross buns. Oh, how delicious. Who else loves a hot cross bun? I'm going to have to stop talking about them because it's making me so hungry. But anyway, just to say that I was pointing out all the good fats that are in butter and why I've always, always been a big fan. And of course, even from an environmental level, it's not coming in a plastic pot, is it, that you're chucking away? So, but I mean, that's probably the, the least of the benefits maybe because the personal benefits to us of not having a processed synthetic spread. Oh my goodness, and lots of really interesting comments about that. Thank you so much, particularly on Instagram, for leaving really insightful information about that. Several things, actually, that I'm going to look up um, and research myself. And I was talking to various gut health experts looking at butyrate. And this is a, a, a fatty acid that you'll be probably hearing a bit more of in the future because butyrate is something, it's in butter, part the name gives it away, doesn't it, butyrate? butter and butyric acid and it's all, all part of the same thing and what it does is it basically helps to reinforce the lining of the microbiome of the gut so if you look at the gut unbelievably all this stuff that's going on and all these microbes and all this activity is encased in the epithelial cell lining which is one cell thick Imagine one cell. Imagine how microscopic that is. That is the, the barrier, basically. So it's no wonder that when that gets damaged, we can suffer from things like IBS, leaky gut, inflammation. And that's partly the job of our good gut microbes is to protect this barrier and to control inflammation and to prevent all the things that that can lead to. We now know about the link with autoimmune disease, for example. So what the role of butyrate is, is it helps to reinforce that lining. So it's unbelievably important for our microbiome. So, you know, all the good healthy fats that we know are in butter, things like CLA, conjugated linoleic acid, which is particularly in the grass fed butter. So the darker the butter, if it says on the label that it's, you know, been from cows that have been grazing on grass, then that's a real plus. So I actually used to like the, the kind of French butters. Is there one called President, which used to get in France, which has got a really nice taste, I think, but it's super pale. And it's interesting, whenever I was traveling through France, I would always think, you know, for a country with so much land, you know, where are all the cows? You know, where, where are the grazing animals? And I think they keep a lot more in, in sheds and barns. And we know that for the environment, cows are so important to graze the land because they are re-fertilizing the microbiome of the soil. Soil has its own microbiome, not just us. 
and it prevents topsoil er erosion so it's very good um, for, for flooding and it also fertilizes the land it sequesters carbon so it captures carbon so you know the poor old cow has been a bit demonized hasn't it but actually that's much more to do with the intensively farmed american style feedlots where they're fed on soil and maize if you've got them naturally grazing in the grass then they're doing a great thing for the planet and also providing really healthy fats in their milk which gets turned into butter and one of the things that comes through from grass-fed cattle is the conjugated linoleic acid. So that comes from the grass, because our butter is only as good as what the cows are grazing on. So if they're grazing on lots of grass, that's really important. So it also means that the butter has more omega-3s, because that comes through from the grass feed. So all of these reasons, again, it's about always reading the label, isn't it? You know, turning the pack over of whatever you're buying, and uh, mostly I would think if butter has been produced from cows grazing grass, it will say that. I know that brands like Kerrygold and Yo Valley, you know, they, they do say that, so you know that. If they don't say it and the butter is quite pale, then I think be a little bit suspicious. But, you know, I'm always looking for artisan butters. You know, there are a lot of little micro dairies now popping up all over the place and they produce their own artisan butters. I mean, who would have believed it? But, yeah, it's a bit like cheeses. You can get different flavours of butters and all of that. Anyway, yeah, lots of chat going on about Kerrygold. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just something. I wrote my first book, actually, which is coming up for nearly 30 years ago on fats and oils called Vital Oils and I've always been very pro um, good quality natural fats and natural foods and not the ultra processed synthetic kind. Anyway I'll probably do a whole separate story about that later because it's, it's such a big area isn't it and there's a lot of myths around cholesterol as well which we need to talk about but probably in something separate because that is a, a big big massive subject. The other thing, of course, that is really good for our gut health are our probiotics. And you may have heard the podcast that I did last Friday uh, with Claire Foss, who is a nutritionist and a researcher, particularly looking at women's health in conjunction with OptiBac, this lovely brand. And OptiBac is this particular supplement, which says for women, is something that I have personally taken. I've gone out and bought it for years. It's really good for pelvic health. It contains two strains of probiotics that have really been shown to help with things like recurrent urinary tract infections, UTIs, cystitis, thrush, bacterial vaginosis, all of that kind of thing. And when I started talking about them, um, they, were, they were really pleased, obviously, because <laughs> we hadn't connected before. And that's when my team got in touch and said, hey, would you like to do a discount? And they haven't discounted the whole of their range. Um, but they have discounted this one for women, which is the one that I talked about. And if you want to know a bit more, do listen to the podcast because it's really interesting. So this is the one if you want to look after this region of the body. It's called Four Women Int Intimate Flora. And it has two very specific strains of probiotic, a ruteri and a rhamnosus strain, the lactobacillus. And these are the ones that have been clinically tested and proven to be effective. So it is medically sound. And you can stock up. There's a 20% Liz Loves discount until the end of the month. So until the end of March, I have stocked up. Um, you can get different sizes. And yeah, you can buy kind of bundles there and then apply the discount as well. So it's a really good deal. So if you're somebody that uses these regularly or you're new to it and want to give it a go, then um, maybe if you've never tried it before, you could start with a little small pack try it and then you've still got time before the discount expires before the end of the month to go and restock basically for the months ahead or the year ahead I think these have got a really long shelf life actually let's have a look that is gosh yeah best before 18th of the 8th 2022 yeah so you could buy 18 months supply at a discount if you wanted uh, so just throwing that out there, probiotics. The other thing actually that um, we talked about on that podcast with Claire Foss was the importance of omega-3s and fish oils. And she had a really good, do they call it an, an acronym where it's the, the letters broken down to, as a way of remembering? Uh, and she said you've got to smash fish. Does anybody listen to that? Do you remember? Can anybody remember what smash stood for? I'm not going to tell you. I'm just going to leave it and see if anybody puts up smash, five fish. Okay, what smash stands for. 
In the meantime, I am a bit thirsty, so I'm going to pour myself a glass of my Mighty Brew Kombucha. Love this stuff. I've got a, I've got a healthy addiction to it. Um, I'm actually going to be working with Mighty Brew on something really special for the summer. I'm so excited. I can't tell you, though. Sworn to secrecy. Mm. Um, but this one, this is the one that you get free, by the way. Winter chai, lovely big bottle, free with any order. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Love these guys. Um, and it is delicious. Really, genuinely rate it. I drink it on its own. I drink it in the evening with a few ice cubes in it. It's just, mm. Oh, yes. Thank you. It tastes sweet, but actually it's not too sweet because, of course, what happens with kombucha is the scoby, the little fermenting friend at the bottom here, is gobbling up all the sugars and turning it into that really healthy probiotic ferment. And this, the sugars are 3.7 per 100 ml, so really low. So a little glass like this is going to have probably about one and a half. And if you compare that to fruit juice or fizzy drinks, you know, you'd probably be looking at, I don't know, what, 15, something like that? Mm. And you're concerned about your teeth with kombucha. Honestly, I've been drinking it for years, never had an issue. What I would say, it's like fruit juice. You know, if you drink fruit juice or you eat, you know, have lemons or anything like that, you shouldn't brush your teeth straight away afterwards because it can soften the enamel. So you just need to, you know, you can, if you want to go and brush your teeth, you can rinse your mouth with a bit of water, swill it around, or a bit of milk, actually, and then you can brush your teeth. But honestly, I've never had a problem, and I love kombucha. So if you're really concerned, drink it through a straw. Yeah, it's delicious, Liz. Light fizz, not too sweet. Thank you for recommending. Oh, love it. Love it, love it, love it. So yes, I'm not sure how that long that offer lasts. I wonder if it says on here because it's really worth grabbing the free bottle. And they do lovely mixed cases. So there's another really nice one that I like, uh, which is lemongrass. That's really good. Really nice, actually, if you're having like a curry or a Chinese meal and uh, you just want something that's got that little kind of hint of something else with it. And the lemongrass, I think, works really well. Jasmine is also a lovely one that they do. Um, let me just check on Mighty Brew for you just to see when that expires. Doesn't say. <laughs> anyway it's up now it's so grab it while you can <laughs> um right oh interesting this is from lindsay on facebook hi lindsay you say as part of my feedback from the life code gx that's the nutrigenomic testing that i've been talking about recommendation for cold water treatment to help with a sluggish metabolism great yeah definitely you know if your metabolism is a bit slow and just needs a bit of a boost you know, give it a try. You know, you can just literally start with five seconds and uh, just work up, see see how you go, be guided by how you feel. Obviously, always be guided by, you know, how you feel personally. Um, oh, Kathy, Instagram, do you buy salted or unsalted? I buy both. Yeah, I buy both. So if I'm using a recipe, particularly a savoury recipe or putting it over veggies, you know, I'll often cook my broccoli or beans or peas or whatever, and then at the end just chuck in a knob of butter. Then I use salted butter because I, I like to get that salty, savoury flavour. But for me, the ultimate would be a toasted hot cross bun with a large amount of unsalted butter. <gasps> I don't know why I'm talking about all this food now because I'm making you feel so hungry. But yeah, so I, I buy both. I always have a pack of both in the fridge. Um... Where are we? Okay, yes, Octobac, that does run until the end of March. And there's actually, I've just been reminded here, there's another really good podcast um, talking particularly about fish oils. And that is with Dr. Simon Dial. I think, Amy, do you want to pop a link on that? I love up on um, Facebook. Because that's a really, really interesting uh, lesson. Not lesson. Well, I guess it is a bit like a lesson, isn't it? He's a really great researcher. And what he doesn't know about fish oils is not worth knowing. He's made, he's made it his life's work, particularly in terms of neuro brain chemistry. That's his thing. And honestly, once you've listened to that, you will never not want to eat oily fish or take fish oils. I mean, it is he's really, really good on the subject, particularly for children. Um, now, I forgot, I was asking you about Smash, wasn't I? Has anybody mentioned... Nikki, you love a bun. Yeah, me too. Love a bun. Um, uh, what's this? Oh, somebody's just made my granola. Yes, you do have to watch it in the oven because it can burn really quickly. Um, I can't believe that nobody has written about Smash. 
Where do you get your kombucha? Uh, from Mighty Brew, or I make it. Oh yes, Patsy. Top marks, smash, remember? Sardine, mackerel, anchovy, salmon, and herring. Okay, sardine, mackerel, anchovy, salmon, herring. Oh yeah, well done, Jax, you got that right too. Yes, well, well, well done. <laughs> Who else? Yeah, Heidi, brilliant, thank you. There we go, so those are the oily fish. We made the granola yesterday. Oh, I've got to make that, yeah, and Sue's, exactly. Salmon, mackerel, anchovy, salmon. Oh, you've put salmon twice. No, it's sardines and herring, must be just a typo. But yeah, those are the lovely, the smaller oily fish that are just so good to have. And you know, if you're eating those three times a week or so, great, but frankly, I do try and eat quite a bit of fish, but I don't eat them three times a week, and my kids certainly don't. So I do take a supplement. This is the one that I take, the Newson Health one. Um, I really rate it. It's got 500 milligrams of DHA. It's the basically omega-3s fall into DHA or EPA, um, and the DHA is the one. I mean, you need EPA as well, but DHA is the real kind of main event, and Dr. Simon Dial explains exactly why. And this is combined with vitamin E and vitamin D, both fat soluble vitamins. So as Emma was explaining, Emma Ellis Flint, about why you sometimes need other vitamins around the supplement that you're taking, because it acts as a, as a supporting act synergistically. You know, ideally we'd be having all these things from food. And if you think of all the phytonutrients in food or the phytochemicals, that you don't just get one nutrient you know, in your broccoli, you know, you, you get it bound up with lots of other things because that's how we're supposed to eat it. And so the same is true of supplements, actually, unless I think you're under the guidance medically or, or with a properly qualified nutritionist or dietitian, you know, best not to go for the individual vitamins. You know, obviously we're told to take vitamin D, D3, that's government advice, we're all advised to take that. Um, so I take this and I just have one, one a day, that's that's what I do for me and I just know that I've ticked that box and I take it for brain health I take it for hormones I take it for skin lots and lots of good reasons and it's just it's just one of those essential things and I look upon it as you know part of my daily diet like I take magnesium I posted last night actually it was a little bit late it was a bit naughty I was on the screen till quite late uh, my Instagram stories I just had put my vitamins out the ones that I take at bedtime so I thought do you know what, I'll just do a quick pick of that and just share that because people often say what do you take at night well at night I take my Newson Health so the same company um, magnesium this is from Emma by the way Emma Ellis Flint on her website she has these and she gives us the 10% discount Liz loves so don't forget if you're going to get that do grab the discount um, so I take my magnesium from her and I take B vitamins, she's got a great one that she talked about before called Serenity, which is B vitamins with some other interesting things that help you sleep, like the theanine uh, and the hydrolyzed casein. So that, that's all bound up in this lovely supplement just to help us feel calm. You can take it during the day for a little bit of calm, or you can take it at night to help improve sleep. So I take one in the morning and one in the evening, like I do with my magnesium. And then I take glutathione. So that's something that I've started taking recently. I, to be honest with you, I haven't really paid any attention to glutathione in all the 30 years that I've been writing about health and well-being and nutrition and food. I've just kind of ignored it because glutathione is something that we're supposed to make in our bodies. And we make it from things like vitamin C. So you think, well, I eat loads of vitamin C. I take vitamin C supplements now and then. So, you know, I, why would I need to take glutathione? Well... My dear friends, when I did my Life Code GX test, which if you've got your magazine, you can read all about. I know lots of you have been doing it because it's just so fascinating. I did my test. In fact, I share some of my results here. Oh, this is a really good feature. What to do about long COVID. Really, really good information on that one. Um, so here we go. So these are my tests that I've shared, my results. And we talked to Emma Bezik, who's the founder of Life Code GX, you know, talking about genetics and nutrition. Um, and she has given us a special offer because normally you have to go through a practitioner. She's created a special package for us, just for my community. So nice. Um, and that includes the report and the testing kit and 30 minutes with a one-to-one -one online with a practitioner. 
to talk through the results so you get the best of all worlds and for me it was such a great investment you know it is expensive I, normally it's about 400 pounds and i think with our discount it comes down to about 330 but honestly it can save a fortune on supplements because it tells you what you don't need to take uh, and importantly what you might need to take so for me the reason i mentioned glutathione is that when i had my test it came back completely red i the, the three genes that they're testing are all blocking the conversion of glutathione which means that my body is not making it as it should so if i need glutathione which we do as a master antioxidant um, then i need to take it i need to take it ready made because my body isn't going to convert it so you know that was just one of the things that my test showed so anyway there's more information if you've got your magazine you'll see it it's on page 44. Um, so that's why I now take glutathione at night and you know I did say to Emma at the time well you know how come I've survived 57 years without making glutathione and she said well you know you've got away with it because you are so full of antioxidants you know I take my I've got my vitamin E and my fish oils I've I've been, you know, using lots of natural foods with vitamin C, for example. So I've got my, my natural base, if you want, of, of antioxidants. Um, so those are compensating. Those are sort of just carrying my body through without actually converting it into glutathione. So good job I've been, you know, swallowing all my juices and doing all my other things. However, she said, obviously, that is putting a strain on your system because your system doesn't have the glutathione. So anyway, I rushed out and bought a pot of glutathione as soon as I got my results thinking right okay I'm going to take some and see what happens and honestly I took it in the evening and I woke up feeling bright as a flipping button and you know I am not a morning person that was something else that my nutrigenomic testing showed I'm, I'm definitely a night owl I'm not a lark I'm really happy to sit late at night it's probably one of my worst habits actually is that I can get engrossed in something usually online a piece of research or writing and I'll be you know, I can sit there till one two in the morning quite happily um, but I'm not good first thing so this was a real test because I woke up early the next morning because I was having to get ready for homeschooling and all of that and uh, I felt really bright I definitely felt brighter and that that's the best way that I can describe it really so now I do take glutathione every night um, and wake up feeling better for it, despite all the stresses and pressures and everything else. And, you know, I think it's about personalised nutrition. You know, it's about understanding how our body works and what we need. And I think that's why so often we're hearing now that, you know, it's a bit like HRT, isn't it? There's no one size fits all. I can't say to you, oh, just, you know, pop on a patch of 50 micrograms of estradiol or whatever and you'll be fine because you might not be. So it's a, that individualized approach. And I think we're all different. Our genes are different. Our microbiome is different. Our gut bacteria are different. All these factors in our bodies. And I think we have to become attuned to our bodies, try different things. And if you've got the opportunity to be tested, then that's obviously great because you know our genes are very binary. It, you, it's either off or it's on. You know, there's no well, maybe I'm a bit of this. You know, it's like you can't be slightly pregnant. You know, you either are or you aren't. And it's, you know, it's like that with our genes. You know, you've either got that gene or you haven't. And if you haven't got it, you can't get it. At least at the moment, you can't. Maybe in the future, they'll be able to you know, inject us all with some kind of gene that we are missing. But for the moment, we can't. But what we can do is use epigenetics. And epigenetics is something that we're hearing more and more about. And it used to be that you wear your genes, your genes, and that's it. You know, it's a done deal. Bad luck if you haven't got the right ones. Now we know that we can influence our genes. So knowing what you need, you can influence it. So I can influence my genes that aren't converting antioxidants into glutathione by actually giving myself some ready-made preformed glutathione. So, you know, I've kind of got around that. It's a little kind of biohack that enables me to feel better working with my body. But that's not to say that that's what you guys need. You know, you might not need it. Although, interestingly, it's, uh, I'd say, why take glutathione at night? I take it at night because it's the master antioxidant that's very much involved with repair and detoxification within the body. And... I just felt better that way. I just felt that I would, you know, wake up brighter in the morning and my body is resting at night. That's when the cells are doing a lot of their repair work. So for me, it just seemed to make sense. But 
I'm going to do a little bit more exploring around glutathione because so many messages actually have come in and comments from those of you who've already had your Life Code GX test to say that you too are blocking glutathione. So I'm kind of wondering how prevalent this is, you know, how common it is and whether it affects people from different backgrounds, for example. We know that different communities um, you know, are affected in, in different ways genetically. So really fascinating. And you know, we really are, we're breaking ground here. You know, that we don't have endless randomized controlled trials on it. I mean, there is a lot of data on PubMed if you want to go and have a look, particularly around glutathione. It's been used and known in the academic circles for a long time. And a nutritionist friend of mine who I was talking to about it, she said, oh, yeah, she said, we know all about glutathione, you know, the master detoxifier. And she said whenever we were going out, you know, for a night out in the pub, you know, we would always take our B-complex and our glutathione before going out because we know that we would have a brighter morning. So, you know, that's not a pink ticket, by the way, to go and, you know, drink as much as you like and just take your supplements. But we know that B vitamins are depleted by alcohol. So, you know, especially if I've had a glass or two of wine in the evening, I make sure that I have my, my B vitamins when I go to bed. And uh, yeah, it seems to work. Also, nice big glass of water, obviously, rehydration. Uh, anyway, I'm just sort of sharing that with you because it, it just shows, I think, the importance of personalization. And actually, interestingly, looking at butter, my lovely butter dish here, uh, one of the things that my genetic test showed is that I don't convert beta carotene to retinol. You know how we're always told, oh, you vitamin A, you can get it, you know, you, you eat your leafy greens and your body will convert it, beta carotene to retinol. Well, my body doesn't. My body doesn't have that gene that does that. So it's a good thing that I am eating things like butter because I need that animal produce. I need that natural form of retinol because it's the only way that I can get it. My body isn't going to make it for me. Um, actually, talking about food as we are, I was going to do a quick recipe. So sorry, I've burbled on for long enough. I hope you've got a little bit of time. Um, super quick. This is actually going to be my lunch. It's a new recipe that we've put up on the website and it's griddled mackerel, so I was kind of feeling in a fishy mood. And it's got this most delicious sauce. So you'll find it on the website. I've got it here on my um, iPad, just to remind me of the quantity. So what I did earlier was, the recipe actually talks about having tender stem broccoli. I couldn't find any. Um, my local village shop only had main broccoli, so I bought a couple of heads of this. And I've used one of them here with a little bit of olive oil. I've just popped that in the oven for a few minutes with some toasted walnuts. So that is literally just roasted broccoli with some roasted walnuts. And that's going to go onto my plate. Um, this is my mackerel. So I've got a couple of lovely mackerel fillets. And just before I went live, I just drizzled them with a little bit of olive oil. So another really good fat, olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper. Actually, I didn't put the salt because I didn't need to because the mackerel was quite salty. Just a little bit of ground pepper. So I'm just going to um, pop those on the a high heat just to griddle. And I mean, you could pop it under the grill if you want to, but I've put that on the high heat. And then while that sizzles away, this is the sauce, if you can see that. So I'm using blueberries. Blueberries and mackerel, have you tried that? It's a great combo. So in the sauce, I've uh, just lightly fried off a few little shallots, chopped shallots, or you could use a little bit of finely chopped onion, um, some garlic, and that's in my olive oil. And then I added a little bit of balsamic vinegar, some rosemary, fresh rosemary, and some blueberries. And then you could add a little teaspoon of honey if you want to. And that has all made that delicious. So, I mean, think about the goodness in this dish, okay? So we've got the omega-3s from the mackerel and the olive oil, so giving us the healthy fats. We've also got healthy fats in the walnuts. We've got the brassicas here, our cauliflowers. You've got vitamin K in that. And because we're eating greens with good fats, it means that we absorb more of the vitamin K. So all the other goodies that we get in broccoli. And then coming into the sauce here, you've got all the anthocyanins in the powerhouse of the purple blueberries. You've got really good antioxidants coming through from the fresh rosemary. Got a bit more olive oil in there. You've got the goodness of garlic. You've got the prebiotic inulin from the onions. So, I mean, what is not to love? I will grab myself a plate. Uh, and see if I can plate this. 
this is actually going to be my lunch. Uh, where are we? Let me use that to check that that's not... Yeah, that just needs to cook a little bit more. So, probably get my boys in the kitchen in a minute because they can always smell. It's funny, isn't it? It's like the clarion call. Hmm. So I'm going to create just a little bed of the broccoli and the walnuts. And then on top of that, I will add my lovely hot mackerel in there. The other things I love with mackerel, actually, I love, you know, fresh lemon juice, love a bit of horseradish with mackerel, a um, little bit of sliced apple. That's, you know, it just kind of cuts through, doesn't it? Cuts through some of the... Um, the natural oils and then you just use this sauce and it's called agro dolce dolce being Italian for sweet oh my goodness look at that so there you go so you'll find that on lizardwellbeing.com but it's super easy you'll probably remember yeah delicious oh I wonder the nutritional value of that one dish must just be off the charts um, more recipes, obviously, that I love in my yearbook too. So this is just storming because we've got the free offer with the note notebooks for that. So I've got these here on the farm. So I send them out, literally pack them and send them out. I sign them. Um, great for Mother's Day, maybe if you need a little gift or Easter coming up. These are just some of the recipes that we've got in here. This is seasonally. So this is all the lovely spring ones. Then moving into summer, there's also beauty and crafts and all sorts of things. I just spotted there something. Um, oh, look, there's my lovely Lily talking about makeup. Yeah, garden crafts. There's a little silver bird scarer and crop markers made out of twigs. You know, there's just lots of lovely, lovely ideas. It's a lovely book to sit and dip into. Talking about botanicals, coming into summer here, eat the season. So all the things that we can look forward to, asparagus, fennel, strawberries, peas juicing ideas really really good recipes oh my goodness just flicking through here I'm just reminded actually so many some flower ideas and then we get into heartier food really for autumn and winter but of course things you can eat at any time these are some really great snack ideas these are delicious actually the coconut pistachio and strawberry bites um, and the chickpea popcorn that's also really good if you're having a movie night um, lots of lots of good things and then of course going into Christmas as well and um, all the feasting the coconut chai latte recipe. Oh, that one's good. Cranberry and cinnamon gin. Oh, I do love that. Anyway, just to let you know that I do have these. Year but one sold out completely, but you can read it online on Readly, the digital platform, so you can read it there if you want to. Um, I think, Amy, you can pop a link to Readly. There's a link in my Instagram as well if you want to see that. And at the moment, you get your free three little notepads, the Lizard Wellbeing ones exclusively um, with any book. I've also got copies of the Good Gut Guide that came back into stock that sold out completely. We do have a few in if you want that one. Um, and of course, the Good Menopause Guide. So you can take your pick, basically. You get your notepads free with, with any one of those. Um, or any two of them. Obviously, if you order two books, you get two sets of notepads. You see where I'm going with that one. Um, just a few more questions that have come in here. Yeah, Studio 10. Okay, so the Studio 10 you get a free voucher with the magazine subscription. So you get a £10 voucher to spend on their website. They've also given us a Liz Loves discount. Okay, so that's really good. So Studio 10, if you are interested, lovely British brand, 20% off all their full priced items. Okay, so not the sets because they're already discounted. But if you want to try like their mascara or actually this is the one... I'm using at the moment, I've put some on just before I went live. It's called Plumping Blush. Have you seen this? Did you see me with um, the founder with Grace? So tiny little dot like that. And it is, it just transforms your skin. It just gives you that healthy glow, you know. I mean, it's foolproof. You just put it here, a little bit up here. Job done. What's not to love? You can use it on its own. You can use it over makeup. You can use it under powder, however you want. And it is very concentrated, so that, I would imagine, is going to last a long time. And the other one that I really liked from theirs is this one, which is sort of a radiance. Um, you use this, you can use this all over the face or just sort of to highlight areas. Do you see that? That little sort of sheen? So again, that just sort of gives you that glow. 
So you could use that all sort of around here and over eyelids here and then pop your plumping blush on top. I keep wanting to say plumping plush, but that's a spoonerism, isn't it? Plumping blush. Uh, so that's it. So nearly time to finish. Oh, thank you. Somebody said, I love your necklace. This is the Neroli. Um, I love my Neroli. So I just think it works well against a solid colour and it kind of just lightens up everything. You know me, I don't often wear things that are kind of high neck, but I just think if you're going to, then it's nice to just sort of showcase a little bit of a, a jewel. And this one, actually we've done this, kind of really thinking about Mother's Day, Easter. So this is, if you've got your magazine, you'll see it here, that's the offer. So there's a saving on this one, 25% off. Excellent. And that comes in yellow gold or... Uh, rose gold that's the 24 karat gold vermeil and what I love about Neroli is that it's the symbol of love and fertility and joy it was often uh, strewn at weddings because it's the orange blossom flower and this little one I don't know if you can see but it is actually botanically accurate so when I was designing it I wanted it to absolutely, you know, look like the real thing. And it's got a little rose, sorry, not rose, a little orange leaf at the back. And you can wear it three different lengths. I love it, I have to say. And it's slightly flattened on the back. So it sits, it doesn't twist. It just sits nicely like that. So anyway, we do have some of those on Lizelle jewellery, but I'm not sure that we've got masses of stock. So just to, um, just to warn you. And the code for that, by the way, is Neroli. In capitals neroli which means orange blossom so neroli and i love the smell don't you love the smell i've always loved the smell i've always used it in a lot of my oil blends it's that really soft mix between a tangy orange because it's from the orange tree and the softness of like a sort of jasmine like flower because it are these little tiny white flowers and they are so fragrant you know if you've ever walked through an orange grove uh, which i've been lucky enough to do once in amalfi in italy and it was just unbelievable the scent really incredible a um, couple more questions before I go um, okay this is interesting this is from Monica on Facebook she said could I ask you if you know of any benefits to drinking pure pineapple juice for inflammation as I have rheumatoid arthritis and ulcerative colitis I would say be careful the reason that pineapple sometimes gets talked about is because it contains an enzyme called bromelain which can be helpful in some cases, and some people take it actually as a supplement. Um, I'm not sure, and I would say the problem with juice is that it's very easy to swig large amounts of juice. You know, you wouldn't eat a whole pineapple in one sitting, but you'd probably have a glass of pineapple juice, which could be the equivalent to a whole pineapple. So I would say just be really careful. Uh, interestingly, talking about arthritis, in this issue, there is a feature all about eating for arthritis, which you definitely will need to see, uh, written by Dr. Harriet Holm. So she is one of my new columnists. Here we go. Yeah, Dr. Harriet Holm. And how about that? And the feature is actually called Eating for Arthritis. And it talks about the different types. So it talks about osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis and the different things that can help. So definitely take a look at that. But I would suggest be a little bit careful and if you you know have ulcerative colitis you know look at things that can support the overall microbiome there's lots online about that we've written a lot there's a whole section on the Lizard Wellbeing website called Healthy Gut um, which you would certainly be worth looking um, is the magazine available to those living in the States says Margie from on Instagram hi Margie yes you just have to pay the postage so we'll send it anywhere uh, and we just charge the postage at cost. So, you know, we don't make any money from that. It's just a service. But obviously, it can be quite expensive to post it. Do get onto the Readly app, though. You can get that anywhere in the world, and it means that you can read it online. So there's a link in my Instagram bio to Readly that gets you a free month if you want to try it. So I think, Amy, I think you've already put one up, haven't you, on, um, on Facebook? So it's basically you pay £7.99 or whatever that would be in dollars per month. And as I say, the link gets you the, the free month. Um, and then after that, everything you read on it is free. Everything. So all is our well-being, yearbook one, 
all the back issues, I think going back about 12 issues now of, of Liz Our Well being loaded onto Readly, plus all the other magazines. So if you, you know, if you want to read American Vogue or People magazine or Good Housekeeping or Allure or Elle or, you know, whatever they are, or any of the specialist magazines, magazines to do with crafting or recipes or sewing or, you know, anything, Martha Stewart, you know, all those great magazines, Oprah, you know, they're, they're all on there. So, you know, really amazing value, I think, um, because wherever you are, if you've got a phone or a tablet or you can read it online on your laptop, but you then have got access to read current magazines. I mean, it's just genius, I think. So, you know, I would say if you're living overseas and you want an immediate, quick look at the magazine, then that's a great way to go. Or if you just want to keep a record always, you know, on your phone or your tablet that you can flip back and refer to. Um, and then if you'd like to have the actual printed copy, and I do think you can't beat a bit of print. You know, I've always been a print girl, started my career in journalism, writing for magazines more than 30 years ago, then went into books, writing so many books. You know, for me, print, is really where it is because it's so tangible it gets you off a screen you, know, you can sit and curl up on a sofa with a good book or a really good magazine and just enjoy it and the other thing about being in print is that you have to be really sure of your information you know if we put something online and it's not right you know i would hope that we would never do that that would be devastating but if we did we would go online and fix it job done but if it's in print I can't do that. You know, that's why it's always such a nerve wracking, tense moment for me when we, I get the call. You know, I see all the proofs and they say, Liz, uh, we're going to print. And I go, I have to make the call. You know, I'm editor in chief. I have to go, OK, print. And then it's done. And once it's printed, it's off the presses. That's it. You know, I can't change it. I can change stuff online. I can talk about it. Um, but, you know, it will forever be here. So there's something I think a bit more trustworthy about things that are actually physically printed um, and certainly the, you know, all the publishers I've worked with over the years, all the manuscripts I've delivered, everything has to be legaled, has to go through legal eyes to make sure that it's accurate, you know, nobody's being libeled or anything like that. So, you know, I think there is something definitely to be said about the printed word being a really good trusted friend that we should hold on to. It's obviously much more expensive to produce. You know, and we are a little team, so we're super grateful to all those who support the printed magazine um, because it's it's a labour of love and we love it. And I know that so many of you love it and we are determined to keep it going. We had to come out of retail uh, during well this time last year, actually, and go subscription only, which is why you can only have it on subscription because too many copies were just being pulped and destroyed um, in the retail section. So we decided to just take a deep breath and, and go alone. So um, it's lovely that so many of you love it and support it. Thank you. Great, gosh, where's the time gone already? I can't believe it. My lunch is getting cold. So I'm going to have to go. I'm going to love you and leave you. Just to say, um, oh yeah, meals for one. Okay, Jeanette, I mean, that would make a really, you could do that in a half, couldn't you? I buy so much stuff and I freeze the other half. So, and the mackerel fillets you could keep for ages or you could te you know, turn some into a mackerel pate, for example, which would be really nice. Um, but yeah, good point um, about having smaller portions. Uh, what brand is my top? Do you know, I think it's an old Marks and Spencers one. I can't actually see, I'm fairly sure. I can't show you the label. I think, does it say Marks and Spencers? I'll show you my bra strap. I think it's Marks and Spencers. <laughs> I've had it in my cupboard for ages, but thank you. I'll see if I can find it. If I can find it, I'll pop it on my stories. Okay. Thank you very much for being with me. So if you haven't listened to the new podcast yet, it's out today. It's with Dr. Lucy Pollock talking about ageing and in particular some of those harder conversations that we might need to be having with our parents or elderly relatives. So she was wonderful. I really highly recommend it. Um, tomorrow I've got a brand new edition of my menopause videos going out on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do. There's lots going on there. YouTube is such a mash of everything. I mean, it's just, you know, global stuff that comes at you. So you, my recommendation is to subscribe to the Lizard Wellbeing channel. Otherwise, we just get lost. <laughs> And if you subscribe, then you'll just see the next one automatically come in. So I've written, not written, I've recorded um, a piece for tomorrow for YouTube um, talking about sleep and menopause in particular. 
and a few other little nuggets that you might enjoy. And then Friday, I'll be back live. Uh, Friday is always a busy day. We've got our newsletter going out. Make sure that you're on the list if you want that. It's a free subscription newsletter that comes out on Friday afternoon, ready for the weekend. And also the Friday Five podcast, which I have to tell you is a good one. Anyway, sending you lots of love. I'm going to go and eat my mackerel. Hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. It's downhill to the weekend. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Debbie. Thanks, Denise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Big kisses. Bye.